in the 1990s, the West African sub-region was known for a lot of conflicts. Uh, many of the countries within West Africa were embroiled in one war or the other. But after the year 2000 and a couple of years back, there's been a steady improvement in the democratic credentials of these West African countries. He's been in power for 22 years, but a couple of weeks back, President Yaya Jame of the Gambia decided to accept defeat in an election. Quite uncharacteristic of him, given that he'd been a president for the last 22 years. Just a few days ago, the president incumbent of Ghana, John Bramani Mahama, was defeated in an election which saw the opposition leader Nana Adodankwe Kufuado assume the reins of power. What does this changing dynamic within West Africa mean for regional stability and regional order? With me here this morning to discuss this and many others is Professor Tony Knudsen. He is uh, into UN issues as well as peace building and intervention. He's also an expert in international law and humanitarian intervention. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, have you been monitoring um, issues within the West African sub-region, especially with regards to the increasing number of democracies within the region? Well, certainly. I heard the news, and I think it's uh, very encouraging. Because, as you said in your introduction, uh, we were used to hear in Europe the news from West Africa about new conflicts arising, ethnic cleansing, uh, and simply general tendencies of chaos. And one had the feeling back then that it, it was sort of spreading from one country to another, bad things spreading over the borders. But that was back in the 90s especially. And now we hear this uh, different uh, history, the different story, the different pattern, that the good things uh, seem to be spreading here, democracy, and also um, recurrently attempts by the West African community to try to solve problems of peace and conflict themselves. So. Um, Actually, it comes through, uh, at least from, from the distance of Europe, as uh, a very encouraging uh, development. For, from the um, regional perspective, what do you think might be accounting for uh, the changes that are happening? Well, that's a difficult question, uh, for me at least, to answer. But um, sometimes there is an effect of, um, of exactly a practice spreading. So we've heard for a long time that in Africa it was time to find African solutions to African problems. We've heard about the anti-coup principle of the African Union. Uh, but for some reason, apparently in, in West Africa, uh, the development is very strong towards, um, if not consolidation, then at least progress in terms of democratic government. And um, maybe one explanation could be that at least the consequences of conflict and, and large-scale violence also uh, pertaining to struggles over government, that these consequences have been felt very strongly in this part of, of the world, in this part of Africa. So maybe there's been some determination also on the part of, of politicians to, to try for a change and, and maybe hopefully democracy can be part of the solution. You mentioned earlier the anti-coup principle. Um, what exactly does it say, and how do you think it could help um, in ensuring uh, democracy within the sub-region? What role has it played? Well, as I know the anti-coup principle, it is not about um, intervening for democracy. It is about stopping coups. Yeah. But, um, well, normally it comes in uh, in favor of states that have become or are into a democratic development. So we saw, for instance, in, in Cote d'Ivoire uh, that there was, in 2011, this constitutional coup attempt by Bagbo, and um, it was not welcomed by the African community or the West African community. Um, so um, it means that if you have a democratic development going, and then somebody, either a military coup or a political coup, uh, is trying to change that, that becomes difficult. It goes against the tide of, of the present time. That, that it also suggests that if you are an incumbent president and you try to overstay your term, the yeah. African uh, the Union will not back you. Yeah, okay. and I think that that must matter. Of course, in some cases, you can, you can get away with it, and you can manage without the backing of the Union. 
but I mean the, the more states that come into democracy and more the, the more obvious it will be that you are an outsider uh, if not a pariah then at least an outsider especially now in West Africa where so few countries left were not democratic and maybe there is this um, this feeling that this is not in in line with the tune of the times any longer okay do you think that it's likely that such developments can spill over into other regions of um, Africa where there are still a lot of dictators? That, that is difficult to answer because it looks quite different okay. in some places like north, parts of North Africa, East Africa. Um, so um, perhaps I, I do not dare to speculate whether that is likely. Okay. Um, but but, but that obviously will be desirable. Yeah, and, and why? I mean, that now I'm a Western com commentator. Uh, of course, we in the West are used to being very fond of democracy. We have good experiences with democracy. For starters, it is a way of potentially involving the people and getting a share, though however minor it might be, and you feel you have a share in government. So uh, for these reasons, among others, um, we think it's positive typically. Uh, but it means also that now democracy has to prove uh, in various places in Africa that it works out in that context as well, which um, there should be good chances that it will. I mean, normally democracy is a good way of involving people um, and providing for stability, state building processes uh, to continue. Uh, what the people will be looking for, uh, you know all of that, that yeah. will be material progress and that will be that you actually feel you have influence. Uh, so that also means that democracy must not only be democracy by name, okay. but also must truly include people. And how can governments ensure that it includes people? Yeah, um, firstly if a democratic government actually comes through as relatively good, honest and capable and not marred by corruption. Uh, and really also pay attention to the needs of the people, then people may think that it's worthwhile voting for starters. And then secondly, if uh, democracy is not just uh, a system working in the capital and, and being centralized, but also there are elements of more local government, which we, uh, we have in Europe at least, and maybe also in some African countries. But at least for our experience in Europe, we, uh, we think it's important that uh, democracy is also something that is working more locally, more regionally. Yes, w while we uh, talk about the progress in terms of democracy within the sub, uh, West African sub-region, it is also uh, worthy to point out that there is um, a growing security threat when it comes to religious extremism within the same sub-region. Um, from the perspective of the work that you've done with the United Nations, how can that security situation be addressed? Well, um, why would extremists have a chance? Uh, because some people would, for one reason or another, choose to follow them. So uh, if conditions are improving and um, you think that there is some future in the current political system, that in itself will make it, all other things being equal, a little more difficult for religious extremists to, to, to work and do their job. Of course also if you avoid exclusion and marginalization of, of one group on the cost on um, to the benefit of the other, if Christians or Muslims are excluded in some governments for instance, of course that's a bad thing because then what is the alternative? That is to turn to some kind of violent resistance. So um, in principle at least democracy can work if it includes all parts of the population national groups, religious groups, ethnic groups. Of course it's very difficult uh, in practice, but the more consolidated states you have in West Africa and um, the stronger will also their capacities be, not only for maintaining order in their own houses, um, but also the capacity of them together, for instance in ECOWAS, uh, to, to come to the assistance of states that fall into some kind of, of setback which we saw so heavily in Mali uh, some years ago and, and where we also saw that the states were able and willing to try to work out a political roadmap and a security roadmap 
for getting that country uh, back on track. Of course, it's still in the balance whether it will succeed, but it was a good attempt at least, and it looks still quite promising as far as I know. All right, thank you uh, very much. Professor Tony Knudsen, um, he is a professor here at Aarhus University. His area of specialization has to do with uh, United Nations um, peace building, international law, and humanitarian intervention. As the West African subregion continues to become increasingly democratic, he's asking, and he's saying that um, religious, political, ethnic groups need to be included in the process so that the security threats of extremism, religious extremism, can also be addressed together with increasing democracy.